Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brian McLogan and in this video, I'm gonna work on factoring quadratic expressions when A is not equal to one. Now, I'm just not gonna work through a couple expressions. I'm gonna work through 68 different examples. And the reason why I'm gonna work through so many examples is because by the end, I want my brain to really hurt and I also want you to see the patterns that are happening. And you can see that a lot of the problems that I am going to be working through, the you know, they're very similar to each other. The, the leading co or the coefficient of my quadratic term, the x squared, is either gonna be a two, a three, or a, and a four. So that is to keep the problems rather simple because I really want to focus on the patterns and the relationships that you can see when factoring because if you understand those patterns and what to look for, then when you're doing any type of factoring problem that is similar, you can go ahead and apply that to your problem. But I think it's really important to really kind of get these fundamentals down rather than trying to focus on a lot of the tricks and tips um, or you know, at least the long way of solving each and every one of these problems. So what I'm gonna do though, is I do want to kind of build up our toolkit first. Um, so for the first two problems, I'm actually gonna work them out kind of like the long way way that you might have learned in like Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, um, just to kind of understand again the idea of what we're looking for. And then what I'll do is I will start um, working through working through the next couple examples, looking for showing you kind of some tips and tricks as I'm looking through them. And then after that, I will start speeding myself through and start doing them a little bit quicker um, for what you for what I would like my students to be able to do. All right. And again, this is really going to you know provide you with an answer sheet that I hope that you can work on this on your own um, and kind of check your answers and see and make sure that you're seeing these same patterns as you start working through this. And this is going to be uh, an interesting, um, interesting, interesting exercise. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first idea, you know, one of the ideas when we're looking into factoring a trinomial when a was not equal to one was basically multi, you know, what two numbers multiply to give you negative one, add to give you negative one. But that gets kind of thrown out the window. It doesn't work here when we have our a is um, equal to one, so, or when our a is not equal to one. So what we're going to do is what we call the, for the first two steps, what I like to do is called the AC method. And basically when you have something as ax squared, you know, plus bx, plus C, what we're gonna do is we're going to multiply our A times our C. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look two numbers, what two numbers multiply to give us A times C, but then add to give us B, all right? And those are kind of like the factors that you can go ahead and write out. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of list them out for at least these first two examples because they're rather simple. So all you're gonna do is multiply your A times C. So in this case I have two times negative one, so that's going to be a negative two. And then I have negative one. So I think to myself, you know, what two numbers multiply to give me negative two, and therefore add to give me a negative one? Well, thankfully this one's not horrible. Um, we can just say that's going to be negative two and positive one, because the only options here are negative two, positive one, and positive two and negative one, right? So one of the methods we can use for this one is to take these values and write them as the interior value. So it's kind of interesting the way that we um, we can do this, we can write them as four terms. Basically what we're doing is we're taking this middle term negative x and just breaking it up with the negative, um, with the these blue terms. So I'd write this as two x squared, and let's go back to blue, minus two x plus one x, or just x, and then minus one. Okay, so by doing this, what we're doing is we're now writing an expression that has four terms. And what we've practiced in our class, you know, is factoring this grouping style. And so what I can do is factor out a GCF of the first two terms, as well as factoring out a GCF out of the second two terms. So that would look something like this. I can basically just kind of group them. Okay, and now I'm basically just gonna be factoring out the GCF. So in these first two terms, you can see that I have a two, um, 2x, and that's gonna leave me with a x minus one. Now here, I don't really have anything in common, but I want to make sure I can factor out something, so therefore that's gonna be the same expression, which it already is, so that I'll just factor out a plus one. And now you can see that now I have these two expressions where the x minus one is the same, and I'll factor out the x minus one, and that's gonna leave me with a 2x plus one. So now that is my linear, uh, that is my product of two factors. We can multiply those out, which we'll do in later examples to be able to show you. But I just want to kind of give you a long form. But you can see if we're going to do that for 68 examples, that would take us a really, really long time. Um, but there's another way to kind of think about factoring if you don't really like this grouping idea. 
Another way to do the AC method is kind of like the exact same idea. You know, again, you're going to do your A times C, which in this case now would be positive 4, and then to add to negative 5. So again, we're going to look now is what two numbers multiply to give me negative 4 and add to give me a positive 5. Well, that's going to be a negative 4 and negative 1, right? Because negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5. Well, now, rather than writing them as, you know, as the middle terms, um, what we can do is we can think about this, you know, Again, this trinomial comes from the product of two factors, which basically comes from multiplying, you know, a product times another product, which is going to give us the area of some rectangle. So what I can do is I can actually create a rectangle to represent the area because our solution here, this trinomial really represents the area because if we can write it as the product of two terms, that means it represents the area of some rectangle. So I want to basically figure out what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the term, so this, here I have 2x squared, and here I have a positive 2. And then basically what we're understanding here is this middle term, instead of negative 5x, I'm going to break that down into a negative 4x and a negative 5x. So it's really the exact same thing, the exact same idea of what we just kind of did. It's just a way of understanding um, factoring as basically finding the length of the width when you're given the area. So really, you know, a that's exactly what factoring is doing is we're like given the area, we're trying to figure out the length and the width. So now we have the area of, you know, rectangle here is 2x squared. What are the length and the width? Well, that's going to be 2x and x. But we got to be careful. We don't want to put a 2x here because if we put a 2x here and an x here, then 2x times what is negative, negative x? Well, then that's going to be dealing with fractions and it's not going to be as, um, as nice. So what I'm going to want to do is just make sure I put the 2x here and the x there. Then all I'm asking myself is, all right, if this height of the box is x, the area is negative x, what does the width have to be? And that is negative 1. And then 2x times what gives you negative 4? That's a negative 2. And therefore, you can see now this factored form is going to be, and again, we could do negative 2 times negative 1 equals 2. So there you go. It gives x minus 2 times 2x minus 1. Now this one is a little bit easier to see how the product multiplies to give us our terms, right? We know here are like terms. We know that, you know, do, when you multiply the length and width times each of these, you're going to go ahead and, um, you know, get that area and you can combine like terms. However, um, you can see doing all the problems like this would take way too long. So let's kind of, let's take away some things that we need to know. All right, and this is the way that I don't do either of these methods, but I wanted to show you these methods just in case you get stuck on a problem. Um, you could always go back and kind of work it way, work it through this way to you know make sure you're doing, it, especially like on a test or quiz where you only have one problem. Um, but I think the main idea that I want to draw from this is when we're factoring a trinomial, we know it's going to be a product of two binomials. Okay, and for majority of these, like if I have two x squared, I only have one option for the first term. You know, two x and x. Right? Because remember, when we're multiplying binomials times binomials, you can talk a distributive property, you can call it FOIL, whatever you want to, but it's important that the first two terms, right, gives you the first term in the trinomial, right? And then we have the last two terms, right, gives you the last term in the trinomial. And then obviously the, the middle part is going to be our inner and our outer. So those are the other two things. That's really what we're going to be checking um, for these is going to be the, you know, inner and the outer, all right? So in reality, what I'm looking for when I'm trying to multiply this, doing this in my head, I wanna make sure I have the first two terms, my f, you know, it's gonna multiply, give you two x squared, great. Then I wanna make sure that my last two terms are gonna give me negative three. Now in this example, I only have so many options, right? I mean, negative three, it's either negative three and positive one, or it's gonna be positive three and negative one. Um, and what I then what I'm looking for is the middle term. So this inner and the outer give me my middle term. So when you multiply the inner terms and the outer terms, they need to they need to add to give us a negative five. So you know just basically what you can do is you can kind of do a little bit of um, you know a little bit of guess and check here. And at this point, I already kind of see that this is going to be a negative three and a positive one, because again, if you check my work here. I know that one times negative three, the last two terms gives me negative three. But what I'm doing is I'm checking, this is what I'm doing in my head. Two x times negative three gives me a negative six. One times x gives me a negative five. So negative six x plus x equals negative five x. 
all right? So you always wanna make sure the minor, the first and the last you know, work, but then basically what I'm kind of doing in my head is the inner and the last to make sure that it's gonna give me that middle term. Um, now, there's some couple ticks, tips and tricks we can look for. Remember, if the last term is positive, okay, if this last term is positive, then you're either gonna have two factors that are both positive or both negative, right? If the last term is negative, you're either gonna have a positive and a negative or a negative and a positive, always. So when I'm looking at this last term as positive, well, then I look at the middle term. If the middle term is positive, then they obviously both have to be positive. If the middle term was negative, then the two factors both would have to been negative. So those are some kind of tricks that I want you to start looking at because I'm gonna start working on these a little bit quicker. All right, so I have two x times x. Um, let's see, I'm gonna want this to get to give me nine. So if I did times two, that would, no, I'm sorry. If I did times four. Two x times four is eight x, and that would be times one. So again, just check my work real quick. Two x squared, four, and this gives me eight x, nine x, done. Um, now you can see my last term is positive, so it's gonna be both, um, but my middle term is negative. So therefore, my two factors are both gonna be negative. And therefore, since it's a product of two binomials, then I know I'm just gonna be working with here 3x times x, all right? And the only two numbers that are both negative multiplied to give me one are minus one and minus one, right? I mean, there's literally no other option. There's no options for this one. They both have to be both negative because the middle term's negative and they're both positive. And the only two numbers that are both negative one. So I'm not even, I don't even have to waste my time checking my work. That's kind of nice about that one. Uh, the next one is again, I'm limited here with 3x. It's gonna be 3x and x. Now the middle last term is negative. I don't like that, right? So therefore, I'm dealing with a negative and a positive. Um, so and obviously my middle terms need to add to a negative. So when this comes up, this is kind of like this last, um, like on this one. So what we do is we know that one factor is negative, one factor is positive, right? Our factors for negative two are going to be negative two and positive one, or positive two and negative one. When I'm doing the inner and the outer factors, the larger of the two products has to be negative. So I'm thinking about again now these two different these differences need to give me a positive negative one. So I'm thinking though this is going to be a negative one and a positive two. Okay, again check my work. Three x times x again you could and again if you also another way to check your work rather than doing this you can just multiply it out. Three x times x is a three x squared. Three x times negative one is negative three. Two times x is a oh, I'm sorry negative three x. Two x times x is a positive two x. So you can see that the larger of the two products, the three times the negative two or negative one was negative, right? And they also only have a difference of negative one. And therefore it gives me negative two. So I get three X squared minus X minus two. Okay, so that is another way for you to go ahead and check your work. Um, but now guys, I think I've had enough time to at least explain some of these um, and go through it. Now I'm just gonna kind of work my way the best I can. Um, I'll try to check some answers. I did kind of work, th work through them already to make sure there, but now I'll just kind of explain myself um, as we work through this, but we're gonna work through these a little bit quicker. So, all right, the binomials here is going to be a three X and a X. Um, obviously I need a positive and a positive. I need to get to seven, so I'm gonna do plus two and plus one, because I need three x times two is gonna give me six, that's gonna give me close to seven. Here I have three x and x. I need to get to negative nine, uh, nine. so if I do, if I did a three x plus nine, plus three, that'd give me positive nine, and then a minus one, because one needs to be positive, one needs to be negative. Those both need to be positive. Here I'm gonna have two negative factors, because the last term's uh, positive, but the middle term's negative. So I'm gonna be have three x and x. And let's see here, I could do um, two and two would give me five. If I did negative, oh, they're both gonna be negative, right? So why don't we do a negative four and negative one? That gives me positive four and those add up to negative seven, perfect. Um, now we're gonna have one positive, no negative where the larger product is positive. Okay, so let's see, I need to get positive 12 and then minus one and checks out. Uh, this one, everything's gonna be positive and I'm gonna add to one. Now the four, now, so here's the four, here's the tricky one, is the fours. Because a nice thing you can see when I get to the threes or I get the two, I just write two X and X or three X and X. Like it's very easy. However, with four X, I with the four, it could be a four X and X or it could be a two X and a two, two X. 
So these are a little bit more difficult. Um, and so these, you know, I'm, I'm, you're gonna wanna spend a little bit more time, you know, thinking about these just to make sure you're checking your work. Now, obviously I know my last two terms need to multiply to give me one um, and they need to add, the, add to give me five. So, I mean, I don't have many options, guys. It's, it's gonna be one of these two, right? So then you just see, well, which one of these obviously adds up to a middle term of five X, right? Where the inner and the outer add to five X. And you can see that is our winner right there. So I'm just gonna erase well, let's put a line through the second answer. Um, now this one is, but you can see, what do these middle terms add up to? The middle terms add up to a 4x, right? And this one, you can say, well, this is the same one, but instead of them both being, the middle terms being positive, the middle terms now negative. Well, I recognize this to be 2x minus one times 2x minus one. That gives me a middle term of a negative 4x and everything else works out. And you could also write this um, like 2x minus one squared, which we call a perfect square trinomial. All right, here's another four one. So I don't like fours really at all. Um, but again, I usually just kind of do the default of use four X and X and then see if it works from that one. If it doesn't, then I do the twos. Um, so I, I know if I did a positive eight, or I'm sorry, positive two and a minus one, that gives me an eight X and that gives me a negative one, which would give me a seven X. That gives me negative two, positive four X. So that one works. Um, let's do the same thing here with the four. 4x and x, and let's do a three one. So everything needs to be positive. Um, I know four plus three is seven, so I'm gonna do one and positive three. I don't wanna do four times three because that would take me to 12, right? Both my factors have to be positive because my last term's positive and my middle term's positive, both factors are positive, right? And so really the most tr tricky ones that you should, the ones that are the most tricky is when the last term's negative because then you're dealing with a positive or a negative and you gotta do that a subtraction in your head. But when the last term's positive, then you just kinda look at the middle term and it's either both positive or both negative based on what the middle term is. And again, that adds its x, everything looks like they multiply out. So here we have one that doesn't look that nice. So again, I'm just gonna default with four X and X. Um, I know that four X times three is negative is 12. So if I needed this to be negative, I'd multiply it by negative three and a positive one. And that gives me a negative 12 X plus one would be a negative 11 X. And that gives me a negative three works out. All right, let's do a four X here. X. Now let's do a positive three. Um, I don't want to multiply this one by three. And if I multiply by one and three, that would give me seven. So it doesn't look like th this one's working here. So let's go to the two X. And I recognize two times two X times three would give me a six X, right? If you add another two, um, give me an eight. Oh, again, here, they both need to be negative. I'm sorry, they both um, they both need to be the same sign because it's positive and they both need to be negative eight. So if I did negative two, I'm sorry, not negative two, negative three and negative two, negative one, right? Because that's negative six and that'd be a negative two, which gives you a negative eight and that gives you a positive three. Here they're both positive, both factors are positive, but, they're, but they have, um, I'm sorry, they're the same sign because it's positive and they're both negative. Um, I'm thinking four times four is 16. So that's probably something I'm gonna wanna do for this one. So I'll start with four X. And since they both mean to be negative, that would be a negative four and a negative one. Let's see if that checks out. That would give you negative 17, positive four, works out. Um, all right, back to the twos, thankfully. Geez, that was a, that was a bad work there. Um, both positive, or I'm sorry, both the same sign and thing, so they both have to be negative one. Negative one, that works. Um, same sign, both positive. Okay, now obviously if, if I do two times two, that gives me four and then plus one. Perfect, so then that gives you two, two x squared, there you go. Um, all right, now we have same sign, both negative. So let's see, if I did two times negative three, that'd give me negative six and then this would give me negative one and you can see that multiplies out. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm really finding the first two terms then I'm basically kind of finding the last two, um, making sure the last two terms work, but then I'm just kind of doing this middle term in my head. I'm doing that adding and subtracting in my head. And then I always kind of go back and do foil kind of in my head just to make sure things work out. Because trust me, even when I was making the key, I was making mistakes. So, I mean, it's very possible, especially when you do this many problems, you're gonna get things mixed up. Um, all right, 
But again, that's why I like kind of dealing with the patterns is when I know the first two terms have to be negative 2x. Um, we know negative, I know I need to have one positive and one negative. Um, since I'm getting a positive x, I'm thinking this is going to be a positive three and a negative one. That gives you a negative three and that works. Next one is negative and one positive, one negative, but I know it's gonna be a two x and an x. All right, if I did a, that would give, if I did two x times negative four, that'd give me a negative eight. And if I just added one, that'd give me a negative seven. And obviously I need one to be positive, one to be negative to give me negative four, and that works out. Three x again is nice here. Um, one's negative one, and the middle term's positive. So therefore, if I did a positive one and a negative one, okay. Um, let's see again, that gives me a positive three X, that gives me a negative X, which would give me a positive two X. And then that gives you a negative one. Um, positive, negative, that means they're both the same sign, but both factors are negative. Okay, and again, I'm trying to get to seven, so if I did this by negative two and a negative one, the three times two gives me negative six. Now, if, again, if you multiply by negative one, then you would have a, if you switch these around, that'd be a negative five, right? So you can kind of see how you can do the multiplication in your head. Um, now again, here, I see that five, right? But now everything's positive, positive. So therefore, I bet I could just rewrite this. I bet I already know the answer. Three X plus two times X plus one. And let's see if that works. Right, because if you already did three times two, if you did that product again, that'd be already to six. That's already larger than this term, right? And they both have to be positive and the same sign. So that gives you two, two, three, five. There you go. Um, another three one here. So this would be three X. All right, so let's see. Let's get that to a negative three and a positive one. Again, that gives me negative nine. So I see that in my head. That gives me a positive and that gives me a negative. Sweet. 3x, x. x. Um, all right, so now I have a four. Um, so again, the four, you gotta be tricky. This could be a two and a two, it could be in a four and a one. But I recognize if I did three times four, that gives me to 12, right? Which is really close to 13. And the other factor of four would have to be one, right? Because four times one is four. I know they both have to be the same sign, so you're gonna basically combine them. And that's another thing actually I didn't think about uh, to mention. When they're both the same sign and you're trying to find that middle term, you're adding. It's either adding two negative numbers or you're adding two positive numbers. That's why it's kind of considered the easier version. When you have two terms that are one's positive, one negative, technically what you're doing in your brain, what you're thinking is you're doing the difference. You're finding the difference between those two values. So like this negative one here, this represents the difference of my two factors because since my last term is negative, one factor is positive, one factor is negative. So I'm thinking of the difference to be one, right? So when I do these products, the difference needs to be one. So I don't wanna multiply. So what that means is I don't wanna multiply three times four to give me 12, because again, I'm trying to get a difference of one, right? I want these, I want these two products to be fairly similar to each other. So I'm gonna multiply this times, um, I'm thinking positive one minus four. Okay, and that gives you negative four. That gives me negative four X. That gives me a positive three X. You can see that difference here. Um, whereas here, since it's positive, since this is po since they're gonna be the same sign, negative five represents the sum of my two factors. And again, I can see that like four and five would multiply, would add to give me um, five. So I kind of have an idea already what my answer should be. I'm not gonna use the two X and the two X, at least to start off. I recognize they since they both have to be the same sign and both negative, I'm gonna work with this. And I can see that those would multiply out and that works. Um, and let's just start here with the X, four X and the X. Again, we're dealing with another sum. Um, obviously, if I did, they both have to be negative. So therefore I see a put a two here because again, I want this sum to be negative nine. Like if I put a one there, then it'd be four plus two, which I already know is six. But if I do four X times negative two, I know that's negative eight. And then I know it has to be also a negative one. So therefore that'd be a negative nine. Um, all right, another four here. So I have four X times X. Let's try that one first. Again, we're looking for a sum to three and two. Um, obviously it's sum and both positive. And I know four times three is 12 plus one. So that's 12 plus one is going to be 13. That's three, four X squared, done. All right, um, now we're looking for a difference here of one. So where's that last difference of one? Did I have a last difference of one? I already lost it, or maybe, well, it was a difference of one, but this is a different one. So I guess let's just do the four X here. 
And I don't want to multiply again by negative 3. Again, kind of the same case here. But I do want this to be negative. So I'm thinking that's going to be the negative and that's going to be the positive. Because positive 3x and negative 4x um, gives me a negative x and that multiplies and that multiplies. So we're good. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost halfway done. We're halfway through the um, work. Well, almost through the worksheet. We're, I think I did 68 questions. But at least we're on page number 2. Good thing. And I don't think I made a mistake. Hopefully. So let's keep it going. All right. Now, hmm. Well, I'll just start with the 4x. I really hate the 4s. <laughs> You got to do like much more thinking. Um, I don't want to multiply this, this by negative three, and it, this one just doesn't seem like it's working. Like if you multiply four x again, you're trying to find the difference, right? If you do four x times um, three, that's going to be twelve. That's not going to be close enough. If you did four times one and three, then that's going to be a difference of one. So I'm thinking I'm going to need to abandon this. I'm going to need to go to the two x and the two x. All right, and if I did a 2x, you know, I only have one other option, right? The larger of the products has to be positive. So I have to have a positive 3 and a minus 1, right? Then 1 cannot be positive and the 3 negative because that's going to give you negative 2x. That's going to give you 6x, positive 6x. So positive 6x minus 2x, um, you can see how that one works. Here, though, I see that 17, and I automatically think 4 times, um, four, times 4 is 16. And so I'm going to want that to be a positive 4 and that to be a positive one, since they both need to be positive. Did that one already come up? Where is that 17? I remember doing a 17. Hopefully that was, yeah, that was the negative version. Okay. All right, back to twos, thankfully. All right, so I already know the product here is going to be a product of two um, binomials, 2x and x, positive and positive. Um, therefore, let's just do a positive one and a positive one. <clears throat> Literally no other options for us. Has to be both positive and they both have to be ones, right? So as easy as you can possibly get it. Um, again, but you can see like how quickly I'm just setting up at least the factors. Then I'm thinking about these inner and the outer that's going to give me three. Um, and I see, well, if I multiply this by a now again, this is going to be a difference here, right? So this is not a sum. So you're not adding a two plus a one to give you three. This is a difference. So therefore, I'm thinking I need to do a positive four minus one. So that means I'm going to want this to be a positive two and that to be a negative one. And again, one has to be positive, one has to be negative, right? Because that last term is negative. And you can see how this multiplication um, works in this case, and that one's done. All right, so now we have a sum of two of them that are both positive. <coughs> So let's see here, um, plus three, plus one. In this case, we have two x, x. Um, this is going to be a difference. I'm thinking this is, I'm thinking we're gonna to wanna to do eight, positive eight minus one. Let's see if that works. That would give me positive eight, and this would give me minus one. And the rest of that multiplies out, and that gives you two x squared. All right, three x, I'm gonna set up the exact same way. All right, um, and then obviously the nice thing about this one though, guys, is they're both positive, right? Done. Like you, there's no other option. If they can't be both negative, because the middle term's positive. Um, but now we're going to do a different. So we do got an easy, easy, nice, easy one. Then we go back to a little bit more difficult one. Um, so this is a difference, and again, I'm looking for a difference of five with three and two. Um, so I'm thinking six minus one, right? So how do I, how can I get six, positive six? Well, I could multiply that by positive two and then minus one. So that'd be the minus one, that'd be a positive six. And everything else works out. Um, another difference, which is of one. So I have a three X and an X. So I'm thinking if I wanna get a difference here, that means I multiply this by one and this by negative two. So that's a negative two, that's a positive three, which is a difference of positive one. And that multiplies to give you negative two, positive three X squared, sweet. Three X x. All right. Um, sum and sum. So I'm thinking 9 plus 1. So let's get plus 3 plus 1. 3x, positive 3. I'm sorry, positive 9, positive 1, 10x, and that's 3. Um, that's going to be positive 3. Here's the difference between 12. So I'm thinking 12 minus 1. So I need to, how am I going to get the product of my inner and the outer, 1 to be 12 and 1 to be a, oh, I'm sorry, 1 to be negative 12 plus 1, right? Because you want that to be negative. So I want a um, negative 12 and a positive 1. And again, that gives you negative 4. X, negative 12X. Um, let's just do the 4X here. 
Again, this is going to be a difference. Um, so your difference, you could do four, four minus one, right? Positive four minus one. So therefore I did positive one minus one. And that would work. That gives you negative one, that gives you four x squared. All right, now we're gonna do a difference um, with negative seven. So I'm thinking negative eight minus one. So we get four x, x. So if I did negative eight plus one, again, that gives me negative eight, that gives me positive one, that gives me a negative two, that gives me four x squared. All right, we have a sum here. I'm gonna th I'm sum for seven, and we're dealing with threes and fours. So I'm thinking three plus four, right? So I could do three plus one and plus four. Right? You don't want to multiply 3x times 4, right? That'd give you 12x. We're trying to add to these. Since the last term's positive, the middle term's positive, you're trying to add to get you a 7x. Um, here, I recognize a perfect square trinomial, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this. 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. First two terms squared, second term squared, middle term is double the first and the last term number from there. <clears throat> That's a special, special factoring product um, that you can go through. Here, um, this is going to be a sum, so I'm thinking negative, so yes, since I see the four and the three, I automatically think 12, and I think tw negative 12 minus one, or negative 12 plus a negative one gives me negative 13. So let's go ahead and arrive at that. So negative 12 minus one, right? That gives me a positive three, negative one, negative 12. Um, I see the four and the four, so I'm thinking, um, and this is a difference, so I'm thinking positive 16 minus one. So let's try to get a positive 16 minus a one. Um, so let's see, that'd be a plus four minus one. And again, that's four x squared, that's negative four, that's positive 16, negative one. All right. Um, Again, we're gonna look for a difference of one, right? Because it's a negative, so we're looking for a difference of one. So I'm thinking four minus three. I see a four and a three, and I say, well, how would I get a four minus three? Give me that. So a positive four minus three. So let's try to see if we can set that one up. So if I did positive one minus three, right? So four, that's a four x squared. That's a negative three x, that's a negative three. Um, negative three x, four x, that's a positive x. All right, um, this one doesn't seem as obvious here. I have four and a three that I'm gonna be multiplying um, to give me eight. I don't think that one's gonna work, so I'm actually not even gonna try it with the four and the two. I'm gonna start it with a two and a two. And I think about that and I say, well, two times three is six and two times, um, two times one would be two. Six and two is going to give me an eight since they both have to be positive. It doesn't really matter where, oops. Not three, not two, three. Doesn't really matter where the three and the one go, those are interchangeable. They could go in either either um, area. Um, all right, I'm done with the fours. Let's get to the two x's. Okay, we're looking for a difference of positive one. So therefore, I'm gonna think that two should be there and that should be a negative one, right? That's positive two x squared, that's a negative x, that's a positive two x, and that gives you negative one. <clears throat> all right, almost there, home stretch. Um, 2x, x. Here we're gonna be looking for a difference in negative three. So I am thinking <clears throat> negative four minus one. So if I got a negative four, sorry, plus one. So that gives me negative four, that gives me plus three, that gives me negative two, and that's a two x squared. I can see my brain though is starting to slow. <laughs> my brain is starting to slow down on the um, mental mental work through. Again, this is a difference. I'm thinking positive six minus one. So let's get a positive six by putting a three here. Cause then immediately when I write that three in there, I'm automatically multiplying the two X times three to give me a six X. And then I want to subtract one to get me a positive five X. And then I just double check negative one times three is a negative three and that works. And the two X times X gives me two X squared. But the first term, you can see that I'm setting that up like rather quickly, right? And then here, I'm gonna think they both, it's gonna be a sum. And so I see a two and the four, so I automatically, automatically see an eight, but I want that to be a negative eight and, my, and plus a negative one. So I'm gonna do a negative four, negative one. And then again, I just check. Two X, positive four, negative X, negative eight, negative nine. Now they add up. Three X, X. Um, <clears throat> All right, so this is going to be a difference of a negative, so therefore negative one plus one. 
right? And again, when you see that negative, you know it's one's gonna be positive, one's gonna be negative, right? If they're positive, then it's both negative, both positive. All right, let's just double check that. 3x, that's negative 3x, okay. Another 3x, x, so all right, um, a difference here, I'm thinking negative six uh, plus one. So that will give me a negative six and that will give me the plus one. And therefore I just make sure that's three X squared and that gives me a negative two. Two X, X, right? Um, so I'm thinking, again, this is gonna be a three minus two, or sorry, yeah, three, negative three plus two. So that means I wanna get a negative three and plus two. And that gives me, that does not work. So again, remember, you don't need to write the two because two times two is four. So if I'm getting the plus two, all I need to do is have a one here, right? Negative three times one is a negative three. That's a negative three X, that's a positive two X. Those add to give you negative X and that's a two X squared. All right, three X and X. It's a positive two, so therefore it's going to be a, um, a sum. So it's not gonna be six minus one right, or negative six plus one, it's gonna be a negative three plus a negative two. So therefore, I'm gonna want this to be a negative one and that to be a negative two, because that's a negative two X and that's a negative three X to give me negative five X. So that's why it's important. A lot of people will get this one wrong because they'll do the six and the one, they'll think difference, um, but it's not a difference because the last term is positive. There, it's gonna be a sum. All right, so this one's a three X and an X. Um, and this one is going to be a sum. I'm thinking, I'm thinking two and two. I'm thinking 12 and, no, that's not gonna work, not 12 and two. Um, hmm, so it has to be three X and an X. Um, not gonna be seven. But if I did three times two, that would give me six. And then, oh no, so four. Oh, it's four and one, 12 and one, right? I, I'm like losing my brain, yeah. Three X times four is going to be a negative four. That gives me negative 12, and then this would give me negative one. So again, they both have to be both to be negative. That gives me negative. That's negative 12, negative 13. I am definitely slowing down on my brain power. All right, uh, only eight more problems to go, guys. We're almost there. All right, so I know at least I can set this one up. All right, this one's gonna be a sum. I see this as a negative three to give me negative nine minus one. Um, this one could go either way. Um, doesn't uh, this could be negative four plus one? So therefore, I'm thinking negative four plus one. Let's just double check my work. That's a negative four x. That'd be a positive x. That works. Um, that gives me negative one. That gives me four x squared. Sweet. All right, this one would be a three x times an x. Um, Okay, so I have that set up correctly. Now we just gotta think this is going to be a sum. So I'm thinking positive four minus three. So if I wanna get a positive four, I don't wanna multiply the four times three, right? I want a four times the x. That gives me positive four, and this would give me the positive three. That gives me a negative four. That gives me a positive three x squared. All right, um, this one I'm thinking four times two is eight, and then plus one. So I think I can get that with the four. So I'm gonna do a four x and x. All right, um, so let's try to get eight, so that'd be a plus two, and this would be a plus one, All right? So that's eight x, nine x, two, and four x times two. All right, last one here, I'm thinking three and one, I'm gonna do, oh, four plus four and three, right? Uh, four x plus three x, so yeah, let's do the four x, and let's do four x there. So let's set it up this way. All right, um, they both need to be negative then, and so therefore, I don't wanna multiply the four and the three. They give me negative 12, so let's just go ahead and work it on that way. Perfect. Um, all right, the next one, four x squared minus 15 x minus four. I'm thinking negative 16 plus one. Um, two, 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 two. So if I need to get negative 16, I need to multiply by negative four plus one. And that's gonna go, oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down here. Negative, and again, you can just be very careful. I, I, I had the right idea, but again, be careful. Like I've, all these, I've been trying to like go back and make sure that they all worked. And you can see here, I'm kind of getting a little impatient for doing so many problems. Negative three times negative four does not give me positive three, right? So I know I wanted to get, I'm correct, negative three plus negative four. And I said that out loud, but I already have a four here. 
So that needs to be a negative one. So I kind of just like jumped the gun here a little bit on that one. Um, and again, you can just check your work. I thought I was doing a pretty good job trying to check my work. I hopefully, I haven't made any other mistakes because um, I've just been kind of impatient for there. But you can see how easily and quickly you can kind of make a mistake, an honest mistake, right? But through just a check of multiplication, you can see how you know blatantly it's wrong. Um, all right, so then we do the next one here. Um, hmm. This is going to be a difference here with four and the three. I don't want to multiply in the four and the three. I'm thinking I'm going to do a six and two. So, and I know I can get a six with a two times six. So I'm going to do a two X and a two X. So if I want to get a negative six, that'd be a negative three. And then this would have to be a positive one. So let's see, right? Because negative three times one gives you negative three. So let's see if that works. That's a negative six, that's positive two. That gives you negative six X, sweet. Did I finish this one up right? I did, okay. All right guys, last one here. Um, I'm thinking four and three, I'm thinking positive 12 minus one because it is a difference. So let's get a four X, X. Um, so I need to get a positive 12, so that has to be a positive three and then minus one, okay? And that gives you a negative three, that gives you a four X. Um, and that's a negative X and that's a positive 12 as to give you 11 X. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, 68 problems factoring when A is not equal to one. And hopefully um, by working through this many examples, you feel a lot more comfortable with being able to factor any problem because obviously you can see any type of problem where A is not equal to one. But the main idea is to, you know, after you're, once you do a little bit more advanced math, we don't want to be spending 10, 15 minutes trying to figure them out by writing out a list of factors um, or using one of these methods. But these methods are great, especially if you are stuck on a factoring problem. You know, that's why it's important to have something that you can always rely on and not have to just be trying to pick numbers in your head because it's very easy to make a mistake. And I do apologize if I've made a mistake, but it's not very often that I do 68 math problems in a row on factoring in my brain um, you know, in front. But I wanted to make this video because I, I know it can be beneficial for you. I know it's made a lot of um, um, impact on my students as they work through this many problems. They feel much more confident. And when, when they have a, you know, a test or homework or quiz and they are provided a, a problem when to factor when A is not equal to C and they have completed this worksheet, they are good to go. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.